Okay, this is the Rainbow 320 auto chlorinator right here. And uh, we were performing some tests on it to find out why the tablets weren't melting on the inside and trying to understand how does it actually work? Because what we did is we would put some regular food coloring in, red dye food coloring. We'd have about five tablets in there, put food coloring on the top tablet and no food coloring would come out of the system. Worked fine for a long time and then it just stopped working. The actual problem is pretty simple, but understanding why it did it is the hard part. And we couldn't understand it. In fact, what we did is we took out, uh, we meaning the, the commander and I, the wife, we took out uh, the tablets on the inside to see, hey, what's going on? And the only way I could find to get the tablets out is you take this off and they're all laying inside here. Very difficult to get them off, but I just used some uh, barbecue utensils and you can reach down inside here now and grab the tablet out and just pull the tablets out and put them on the side for now while you're working in there. Now, the problem could be in, in this feeder line or in this valve or in there's a, uh, if you see, if you looked at other YouTube videos, you'll see there's a check valve in here as well. And I've watched all the YouTube videos, most of them, and they're all very good. But uh, I've discovered a couple of things in trying to learn how this functions. And the first one is, is that the check valve, which I have out right now, this check valve here, a lot of people say, hey, how can I tell if the check valve's bad? And they say, get a new one. You hear it? And shake it. And this one, nothing. Okay, so this check valve is actually bad, but why would it cause this to not function properly? And this is part of the assessment and diagnosis of your own systems. So one of the tips we wanna pass along today is a much easier way to check this check valve. The check valve is in the bottom here, and let me just take this off for a second. The first thing you can do, some simple checks, is you can take this hose off, which I doubt would ever get actually clogged, and once the chlorine vapors have, have dissipated, you can look through it or blow through it if you like. That's one thing you would check out. The next thing is, is this valve acting up? What's the story with this valve? This is actually a restrictor valve. All it does is it just restricts the amount of water that goes into the container. And that was the big question. Is the water coming into the container through here or is it coming into the container through the bottom? Now, once we open this up, and you look down inside, with the check valve in place, mine is removed right now, but with the check valve in place, if you turn your pump on and water comes up through the center, that check valve is bad. You don't need to take it out and shake it or check anything because what that check valve does is when the water is, this is going back to my pool now, this line is the supply line that feeds back to my pool. When the water pressurizes this, that check valve is supposed to close, not letting water come up in here. And I'll explain all this in a section why they actually do it this way. So this valve here, this is very easy to check. Again, make sure there's no vapors around, but you can just simply blow through this while twisting this, this uh, restrictive knob and you can listen to it. It's doing its job. So take that out. This is clear. So we know there's only one piece left in here. But the question is, how does this thing actually work? This, th this is what was driving me crazy. So we downloaded the, the manual from the, the um, manufacturer. And the first thing I want you to understand is I'm an AC guy. I've been born and raised AC guy my whole life. And in the air conditioning business, everything that comes after the air handler that's blowing air out is called the supply. Supply lines, supply trunk lines. And everything that's coming back to the air handler is called the return. Not so in this manual and not so, I guess, in parts of the pool industry I'm becoming aware of. The reality of it is in the manual itself, they call this the return line. And boy, did that confuse me because I was thinking, oh, we've had this installed on the wrong line or the entire time we've had it. It's supposed to be on the return line to the pump. My, in my thinking, everything return is always negative in suction and everything supply is always positive. In the pool industry, when they say the word return, they're talking about returning to the pool. Later on in the manual, they show a picture of it in the supply line, what I call the supply line. But just so you know that if you're reading the instructions or trying to understand it yourself, in, in the nomenclature for this device, the return could be 
referring to the supply line back to the pool. Now, the next thing is, I'm gonna show you an image here in a few minutes of the inside of this valve. This valve here, uh, I've got an image of it from the pool supply. This valve here is critical. It's the critical component inside here. So what we're looking at here is take this off. This is where the check valve goes in. And then the check valve stops the water from coming up inside here when you initially pressurize this. So when you turn this on, the first thing that happens is because this restrictor valve is in place like this, because the restrictor valve is in place, the water comes through here slowly and they have to stop this water from coming up from here because you want to come here with the, with the supply amount of water, come in, fill this up, and then, and then when this pressurizes beyond this valve, it'll let some of the water go back into the pool. How do they do it? Inside here, there's actual a, a second pipe that picks up the water and takes this off. So the water comes through a second pipe. And on the downstream side, there is a pressure drop. There's a pressure drop. So once this thing gets charged up properly, I've seen a lot of people saying you have to let the air out of it. You have to take the, the, the you have to fill it up first with water. All of those things really aren't necessarily what happens. What happens is if the check valve goes bad, even if you put food coloring in like I did, if you have one tablet in it, what was happening with us, we'd put one tablet in food coloring and we'd see food coloring come out of the supply line. And that's only because as it was, as it was filling and kind of dropping as it initially started, the food coloring got wiped out. But as soon as we put five tablets in there and put food coloring on the top, nothing would come out. After five minutes, we'd open it up and the food coloring would still be on top of the tablets. So with all that said and done, the check valve, easy way to check the check valve is just to see if water is coming up through here when you initially turn it on. If it is, the check valve isn't checking. And that's about the only moving part on here. I doubt that this valve or this hose would ever really go bad very often. And that would be the entire repair to put this back together again. So I hope that helps you out uh, in understanding a little bit deeper on how this functions. And as far as uh, I've seen some other videos where they show the hose attaching to the bottom of this or to the top of this, it doesn't make any difference. It's just which way that they, they hook it up. But uh, for a while there, I thought that was an issue as well doesn't seem to be an issue at all, whichever one that they hook it up to or whichever one you're hooked up to. So good luck to all of you and uh, happy chlorinating. Before I forget, there is one other issue I want to tell you about. And that is several people on YouTube have pointed out that there's a screw inside here. You see it right there? For the life of me, I do not know why they put that screw in there. That screw, once you screw this down, you can then drive that screw into the PVC pipe. So it gets driven into this pipe. I wasn't aware of that screw. And I've been doing this stuff for a long time. And I thought, man, this thing is really on there. And so I went out and I got myself my, which I haven't had in my hands in probably 20 years, my Stilson pipe wrench. And I jimmied this thing off of there. And I tell you, it was a bear to get it off. I'm surprised I didn't ruin everything. The screw, because I wasn't aware of it, I just basically unscrewed the whole thing with the screw driven in. It's still okay. I actually wire wheeled this off. If you've made the same error here, I actually wire wheeled this off, put some Teflon tape on it, put it back together again. It seemed to be fine, but I'm not putting the screw back in and, and be aware of it if you're taking yours off. One last consideration is in the bottom of this canister normally sits this screen. This screen is to prevent the chlorine from going up or down, I guess, inside here. Let me see if I can focus in on this. It can be difficult. Okay, I. it's almost impossible to get that out unless you have the tiniest hands. You've got kids that can reach down there, which you don't want to. So what I did is I used my, my barbecue tools <laughs> to pull it out. Now, why does it just sit and ramble down there? I don't think people realize this. I figured this out on the, the one I saw in the showroom. Is there are four little tabs down here. You see them? And they hold that in place. They're supposed to hold it in place. Mine are still good enough that I could snap a new one in. I have a new one here. I, I would just replace this at the same time. Mine is, is starting to crumble. And, and the reason why is because you don't want any plastic falling down inside to this where the, the check valve is right at the bottom there. So if plastic or anything falls in the check valve, that's maybe one of the reasons why the check valves lock up. So just keep in mind, you, you know, if, if not, you're going to have to make sure you have some sort of way of preventing chlorine from going down into the check valve. 
when you're doing these tests, make sure if you have solar, that you have your solar valve off. The solar valve, when the solar valve is on, it can throw the tests off. So let me give you an example. Here I have it, the system set up and ready to go again. It's all configured with the new valve in it. And if I turn on the water, you see the water comes in through the side, starts to come up, and as soon as I shut off the water, the pump, what should happen is that water should then, in a few seconds, should start to drain back down. That's the, that's the check valve letting go. Now I'm going to show you what happens if the solar going again. When you have the solar on, what happens is the entire solar is going to drain out and the water can actually continue coming up. I'll show you that right now. Now I have the solar valve on. So what that means here in my case is that the water is going to come up, go up through here to the roof, come back down here. That means the solar panels are going to be completely filled. On this line, comes down, is where the chlorinator is. This is the supply line going back into the pool. So if I turn this on, at first the test looks the same. It'll start to fill up. You might see a lot more air bubbles because it's getting the air out of the solar. But ultimately what's going to end up happening here is it'll, it'll fill up. And again, this is just for the assessment purposes. Normally you'd have the top on this, right? Once it gets the air out of the line, Okay, that's cleared up now. Now it's going to fill up. Now watch what happens during this test, because this can throw you off bad. I'm going to shut off it right now. Now what's going to happen is, it's not going to drain down. And you might think, oh, I think this is what he was talking about. No, this is different. This is the water coming back from the supply line, from the roof, is actually still coming out. So you have to wait. If you can't shut off your solar heat, you're just going to have to wait because eventually when the water all finishes draining from the roof, it'll, it'll still do the same thing. The check valve should still open. It's got pressure on it. That's what's holding the check valve open. And there it goes. There it goes. So basically when the pressure is still on it from the roof, there's your nice slurping sound. So remember that when you're doing your assessment on these. Finally, I'm going to put the chlorine tablet in using my ideal there and because I don't want to knock that just all you have to do is get the first one in and then you can drop the rest of them in after that but I'm still going to do my red dye test next okay so on the dye test I'm going to shut this off on the dye test I filled this with red dye and what it does not going to have red dye coming out the, the actual ports you see how this color is very very light now if you do this red dye test as I've done in the past and you put red dye on top of those tablets, when it's not working, you can open this up after 45 minutes and the red dye is still sitting on top of the tablets. If it's starting to dissipate like this, it means that water is slowly moving through chlorinating the pool. So after about an hour, and there goes the drain valve. So after about an hour, if you open this up, after putting red dye on the top tablet and it's almost clear, that means that water is going through and it's chlorinating at a specific rate. That's what I use the red dye for, just to determine it won't, again, you won't see it really, shouldn't even see it coming out of the, the uh, supply nozzles because if it was, you'd be putting a, a whole bunch of chlorine in the pool. There's a very small pressure difference between this and that's how you can determine whether it's doing. So you can use any color as long as you can see it in the daylight.